the presentation will be an insight uh, from the business or film sales company point of view on the VR, how, how we see it. Um, before I start, can I, can I ask you how many of you try VR already? Okay, 50%. Uh, okay, do you hear me? Everybody hears me? Good. So I'll be not original. I actually will start my presentation from my very first time of uh, VR2, as Sergio did, and I think many of you told your stories how, how it was for you for the very first time in VR. So, um, so actually for me it started in 2014 when I moved to Paris uh, to work for Cross Video Days, which, which is a digital content market. In 2014, um, we, we were selecting projects across the world on different formats, web series, um, I don't know, interactive transmedia projects, also VR. In 2014, we only had three projects in VR at that moment out of 60, and I had to try one of them in uh, Oculus headset, and it was the project called uh, Tista Fresh. Before uh, that, uh, that event, um, I had not big clue about the VR, never tried it before, didn't read it much um, about it. Before knowing much, uh, much about it or knowing the story well, I put the Oculus headset and suddenly I, um, I'm in the shoes of this, this person. I hope you can see it. It's actually a snowboarder. I put the Oculus um, headset and I suddenly uh, slide pretty much 100 kilometers per, uh, per hour fast, uh, steep down the, the hill. I don't really know what's happening because I'm not a snowboarder, I'm not a big uh, sportsman, but the experience was wow, believe me. So what happened actually? It was, um, I had to, okay. Uh, I had to be in, in the shoes of this amazing woman called uh, Geraldine Fasnacht. Uh, she switched Swiss and she is uh, 11 times international free ride champion. Other than that, she is also, um, uh, how do you say, wind, uh, windsuit uh, glider. She, so she is extreme sport uh, professional. Um, in this documentary uh, project, Taste of Risk, I had to be in her shoes and be able to move like her on a mountain. It was just amazing. Of course, you know, in, um, in 2014, technology was not yet developed that fast. For the first time trying this and moving so fast, after five minutes of trying that, I wanted to puke. Uh, well, uh, it was an experience of many of us. But, um, but well, still, I stayed curious and I will always remember uh, um, her and being, um, the feeling being in her shoes. A few months later, uh, there is another badass woman called uh, Harley Quinn from uh, Suicide Squad. So um, she is a badass girlfriend of uh, Joker and imagine what, you can meet her or be her in virtual reality. What can it be better for a geek of uh, movies like me? Um, well, bear with me and there are many more projects uh, to come in virtual reality in recent years. So Alien, um, and I'm sorry the slides are very, very dark, but <laughs> the two guys actually behind the two guys, it's the scary alien uh, shape. So um, the, the movie Alien have also created its extension in virtual reality. Avatar 2, uh, uh, how is it, what's his name? John, John Wick uh, 2, um, Jurassic World, uh, Star Wars also, uh, The Martian, and uh, Mummy. You would think that, oh, okay, it's a blockbusters, they have different budgets, all coming from uh, United States. Well, it's true, but uh, this is how the best things are, well, are happening, where there is money. Um, not only films, but also TV series have created their uh, VR extensions. Sergio told that Westworld, um, you could actually enter in the virtual reality of Westworld. Uh, or uh, Mr. Robot, uh, they created a, um, a public event uh, with the headsets for their fans. And also virtual reality has been in TV series um, Back to the Future long time ago, but, uh, but still, it's not such a new phenomenon. Again, you would say, still America, uh, blockbuster movies or TV series, but not just that. Uh, you would probably know these three awesome guys, so um, 
you can barely see it, sorry. So one of them is uh, Alexandro Inerito, who presented his uh, first virtual reality uh, film in Cannes, um, official selection out of competition. So uh, you see uh, also the, let's say, independent or art house uh, directors, the ones of the classical and, I don't know, the, the best movies ever creators, they also are curious and moving towards this format. So. I hope by now you are a little bit more a believer, like me, uh, considering these examples. Um, to back up uh, my story, I, um, I want to present little statistics. So um, you would think virtual reality is for tourism, for games, but some, some insights say that actually video and, um, and movies is the second biggest market for virtual reality in 2016, with 67% of um, consumers interested in, in that format. Games, however, if you see, it's, um, it's, it's 61, so it's much further, further away. Further than that, um, actually, um, the promises for, uh, for film and video market is, uh, is growing. Um, I can tell you uh, that in the, proje in the projections uh, made by, um, in the projections made by some analysts, uh, video should overtake uh, game uh, in current years, but uh, in, by 2021, it will be one at a time much bigger market than, uh, than gaming, which now is pretty much opposite. Uh, okay, this is another statistics, uh, is, um, which indicates actually uh, how the, um, what is the technology that we will use for the future for virtual reality, whether it would be for, for games, videos, uh, or, or movies. And uh, the predictions say that uh, social VR, well, not social, mobile VR, so um, telephone-based VR headsets will, will, will be uh, increasing significantly and overcoming uh, PC or other formats. So um, coming back, uh, back to me, uh, giving you some positive uh, vibes about film, um, about where the VR market is growing, um, I want to say that I work for the company wide. We actually are a traditional film sales agent. The company was founded in 20 years ago. Imagine that. Um, every year we are representing around uh, 20 new titles, we, um, feature films, um, both fiction and documentaries. Um, it's often, our lineup is made out often of the titles, um, how do you say, independent, coming uh, from a smaller countries, um, sometimes uh, theme-oriented theme LGTB erotic content, um, art house very much uh, also so, and also first-time directors. Um, well, the company currently employs 30 people. Um, we have an independent documentary branch, so it's, it's outside that. But in, in wide as a mother company, uh, we also have separate um, departments, let's say, and we also do film distribution in France. Um, we work on European projects, uh, co-productions, and uh, now from 2016-17, we have a department dedicated to VR. Talking about European projects, I want to very briefly uh, tell you that the company has developed this project that is actually a support platform for first, first and second time directors. It is called uh, Ion Films and we have a catalog just there. Just because the project has been long supported by Creative Europe, um, I thought it's a good moment to mention it. And if you have a first or second feature film, it could be a, a, you could profit from, uh, from this project definitely. And if you're interested, I can speak with you later about it. Well, back to, uh, back to virtual reality and wide. Um, to tell you a little bit more what kind of company we are, I, um, I tried to, to, to pick up a few Spanish titles. Maybe it's not the best representatives of um, our lineup, but uh, maybe these are the films that you may know. So uh, The Writer's Barrel, uh, Hidden Away, um, Shepherd, these are uh, fiction films, and uh, Bolingo, 
uh, Kitchen at the End of the World uh, and Bayari. These all films have traveled very, very well in the film festivals. And uh, we have actually very successfully collaborated with Atlantida Film Festival online and offline uh, during the years with not necessarily our Spanish titles, but many titles we have. Um, I didn't mention before, but currently we count uh, around uh, 500 fiction, uh, fiction films in our catalog and 300 documentaries. So this is, this is our background. Um, this you probably don't see at all, but uh, here I wanted to illustrate a um, film, film value chain and indicate where is the film sales company um, take place, where, where do, do we play our game. Uh, and I wonder if there is a lot of people who don't know this and I would need to explore it. How many of you are not very, very sure what film sales company does? Not sure. Not sure. Just one. Okay, so uh, very briefly, we are actually stepping up in, uh, at the end of production, most probably. We, uh, we, we buy the film with MG, uh, minimum guarantee, and we actually uh, are responsible for international distribution of this film, um, let's say worldwide, except if the producer keeps the rights for their home or co-production countries. So we work with festivals, um, festivals, traditional theatrical distributors, online platforms to distribute your film. As uh, we do it for many films, we have a very good network of, of, of the professionals worldwide across the different markets. And that's how it's easy for us, um, for us to, to do this business. Uh, of course, it's not for free. We take a little percentage, but uh, I think it, uh, it takes off from your shoulder a very big work of distribution and proposing the film. Uh, um, so a lot of hard work that we do for you and maybe hopefully more successfully. So this is the model that uh, the company, how the company works. And actually we, um, we, uh, put this, we tried to put this model on the VR too. So here you can see it, uh, cannot see it very well, but this is my colleague Paul. Uh, Paul, me, and our uh, director Loïc Magnon, we are free working on the, um, on the VR part of, of the company. And, uh, and how it all happened actually, as um, I think we are, at least in Europe, we are the first sales agent, agent that, um, that moved towards VR. We acquired a little lineup for the first time in Berlinale 2017. We did our first sale, sales in uh, Berlinale. So I think it was very successful launch. At that point, we had free virtual reality films. And when I mean films, it's actually really narrative VR experience that you can call films. So um, not something gaming experience by itself, but it's actually narrative storytelling. Um, in Cannes, we presented eight films, and so our lineup is slowly but, but growing. Um, among our titles, and maybe you have heard because these films have traveled, um, it's, it's Oh Dear, um, very, very successful Sergeant James, uh, new, uh, new film, and the, the only documentary that we have, it's Notes to, uh, to My Father, that was coming to us after South by Southwest. Um, then we have um, co-production with Arte uh, 360, uh, it's a concert of Mozart. And then we have also uh, genre films in VR, so it's a, um, that, you, that you can call it, so it's the seventh uh, night, um, seventh night and, um, and what else, and, and come closer. Um, I have all the films with me in, and, and I have a headset, so if you want to watch it, um, I can definitely prompt you to do it. I'll be here today, full day, and tomorrow, uh, half day. Most of the films are really short, around five, six minutes. Um, the only one um, over a little bit longer, it's Nose to My Father, documentary one, it's 11 minutes, so it doesn't take much time, and uh, it's beautiful. So this is our current uh, lineup. So 
how how do how do we work? How do we apply our business model and distribution model for uh, for the VR films? Um, so we do it uh, VR film festivals, uh, traditional festivals like the ones that have nothing to do uh, originally with uh, let's say new media, but the ones that are now got curious and doing showcase. Um, so we are working with them. We have a lot of requests from our traditional partners that brought, uh, bought from us uh, documentaries or fiction now to propose a, a VR lineup. Also, um, in, in a new kind of uh, type of partners is dedicated to new media uh, festivals. Um, second group of, uh, of our partners that we work with VR equipped venues, whether it would be cinema arcades like IMAX or MK2 in, 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 in Paris, or pop-up cinemas uh, like maybe you have heard, it's uh, Diversion Cinema, Hervé, um, and um, several others, they're quite... Uh, quite a few at least in France. Um, they actually are interesting um, as they know not only as a pop-up cinema they are not only uh, able to do the screenings in Paris or France they can travel and do this professional setup of uh, VR screening anywhere in the world and of course digital uh, digital platforms so free again very similar um, as for our traditional lineup for the VR lineup we work with the same group of, of partners too and outside the, the distribution, we actually are considering to do VR co-productions. For the eight films that I, I was telling you before, presented to you before, uh, we have not done it this year, but this is something that we are looking in, in to do in, in future. So we want to step in earlier in the project uh, to bring funds to, to develop or produce uh, and, and film the content. or post-production and yeah later later sell it it's not that new for us in the sense that we have done this uh, with the um, with the feature films and uh, by being based in France we actually think that we have um, good access to to um, public funding but maybe not necessarily uh, it would be that it could be a private investment um, again, how do we work with uh, with the films that we acquire? Um, we um, we haven't yet set our practice what we uh, what we would do, which we have as a practice for uh, for feature films. For VR films, sometimes we work with MGs. Sometimes we work with the percentage share. Um, it actually depends on the content, on how we negotiate uh, with the partners, and how do we um, believe what are the earnings uh, coming out of it. Um, so, both are possible. Okay, so um, what I wanted to actually tell you, this goes a little bit outside the, um, our common day experience, but uh, to present you what's out there in, in the VR for the content creator, for the film content creator, right? So um, uh, location-based VR distribution, um, I think for, um, for the moment we could group them in VR arcades. So something that I was telling you, Sony IMAX, they actually, this, this year they just opened the second, um, the second um, VR screen in United States and they're planning to, um, to expand the network rapidly. MK2 has a fully working, um, how do you say, VR arcade uh, in, in Paris and I think they are um, planning to expand. It is an, it is an interesting partner uh, to consider because as they are not only an exhibitor, but they are international sales and, uh, and, uh, and distributor, uh, both for, um, for feature films and, and VR. So um, um, except for uh, the exhibitor model, they are working pretty much like us. Uh, but they can also offer you a venue where you, you can screen your films. And uh, there are other arcades, um, Vibeland by HTC in Taipei, Awesome Rocket Ship and the Simulators. What's important about these VR arcades is that they actually they take a lot of different content. So it could be films, 
they actually, for example, MK2, they bought some films from us, but on the side of that, they are offering interactive and gamified experience. So it's not necessarily purely dedicated to the film content in VR. Then we have a very, uh, very different type of uh, players, let's say dark rides, so theme parks, theme entertainment uh, simulators or uh, guest ride cars, which is, well for us it's nothing to, nothing to do with our business, but uh, this is another type of location-based VR distribution channel. And uh, the third one, the third group would be VR DOMs, so venues or theater-based um, or theater experience may be based on um, venues, again. Uh, so I, uh, I mentioned about them uh, before, like uh, one of the biggest in France is the Version Cinema. They actually, they don't have a physical um, venue, but they have all the equipment uh, necessary to, uh, to do a pop-up uh, cinema anywhere in the world. Outside of that, they uh, I think the, not I think, but they actually became also a distributor of the content. So not only they offer exhibi um, exhibition of the content, but distribution as well. And um, the last VR DOM, it's immersive experiences, like for example, word, Vertex Immersion. Okay, um, another thing, um, I, um, I tried to, before I tried to present you something I know and something partners that we work here. Uh, we, we, we work. Uh, here there is a network called VR Niche that they are offering locations, information about VR locations and VR projects. I deliberately wanted to make this photo because it shows how many there is and this is only VR locations, not uh, just VR projects. So you're free as, as Cara, for example, having a shop and um, workshop or also showing uh, VR content in Copenhagen, they can actually subscribe themselves to locate themselves in this map. As a project creator, you can actually uh, subscribe and locate your project in, in this map too. And if you think that it's a beginning, look, it's very intense beginning. And if, um, if you see, actually there is, um, Mallorca is also marked here. So I don't know who of you uh, have done this already, but apparently things are happening uh, here too. So it's not uh, only in the capitals and uh, big leader markets. Okay, so uh, um, another group of distributors that I was telling you, it's digital platforms. A lot of traditional broadcasters, publishers, um, actually moved in the recent years to, uh, to distribute VR. And if you see, it's your uh, telecom, telecommunication company Orange, Arte 360, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Sky VR, uh, Milk VR or now Google Play, TF1, uh, National Geographic, Discovery, PBS, The New York Times. The new players that have, let's say, um, are arriving purely dedicated to, to VR or arriving newly in, as uh, purely dedicated to VR and um, not with uh, another business um, strategy before, uh, but emerging and growing. It's within Verizon, AT&T, uh, QIY. This is actually a, an interesting platform in China and uh, something to, to check out because apparently uh, China is the biggest VR market uh, now. Uh, and then you have Little Star or Jaunt. Um, by giving this uh, this list, I, I promise you, I don't give you the final list because it's impossible to, go, to give and the things are changing day by day, but I think these are, well, at least a group of major players in, in here. They are looking for your content and many of them, they are actually are able to support uh, your content. Okay, um, speaking about distribution, I also wanted to come back to um, uh, Inaritu film um, because it's another type of distribution model. Um, okay, uh, the, the film was launched, well, the project was launched in Cannes, official selection, out of competition, very traditional film, uh, film launch um, in general. Um, yet it's interactive, um, subject is refugees, Okay, um, yet 
the distribution model that they, they have chosen is actually VR um, museums. So right after Cannes, the, the project went to Prada Foundation in Milan. Uh, I think right now it's going to Los Angeles uh, County Museum of Arts. And for the future, they are considering other uh, museums as their distribution platforms. So by this, what I want to, to tell you that um, um, traditional distribution platforms for films can be applicable for VR, which I tried to illustrate before, but also new distribution platforms and ways are emerging. Okay, um, well, uh, by, by this chart, um, I just wanted to give you um, um, a little uh, landscape of VR and RV um, market in uh, Europe. What it is actually interesting, you can, you can find it easily on internet, but what it is, it's out of many different, let's say, clusters based on technology, health, education, all whatever, um, that are now interested in VR and started to work in VR. The central bubble, actually, the, uh, the big one is dedicated to VR content um, uh, platforms and, and agencies, so production and distribution platforms. This is something to look in. Most probably there are more companies that I haven't listed in my, uh, in, in my list uh, before, just before, because I, I don't know them that well. But uh, one thing to, uh, to understand that content is actually big in VR, uh, in, in production and distribution both. Um, this is another type of uh, chart made by the VR Fund. And uh, again, European VR industry landscape, it's a pity that you definitely cannot see it well, but um, I like it a little bit more because it separates um, the production companies, the leading production companies, something to see and to follow um, their projects because there are amazing content uh, being made in, in, in VR now, and also the, the platforms for distributing uh, content as well as other type of um, um, not a, not a film type of content in, in, in VR. Okay. Many of you are wondering, okay, VR maybe you can try, but uh, who can invest it? Because uh, the budgets of uh, the production of uh, the VR films is minimum twice as big as any other, and uh, most probably even more if you want to make uh, something outstanding. So, um, uh, what I wanted to tell you that actually um, there is already some funding in VR and there are different groups uh, how you can fund it. So I would really um, encourage you to look in uh, the national funds which uh, supports uh, film in development production. Um, maybe there are some funds uh, dedicated to startups but uh, at this very early stage of um, VR market, it could be actually allocated to, to VR content and tax incentives uh, schemes. Um, what happened actually with um, certain kind of institutions like uh, film centers or uni fronts in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in France is um, by their complicated, let's say, support schemes, what they did, they have not invented another type of support scheme for VR content, but what they treat now um, VR projects as short films, so everything that is applicable for short film, it could be apl applicable for, um, uh, for VR projects, so support for development, support for production, maybe for also for distribution. Not all the countries are progressive, let's say, but uh, some of them are, and uh, you would not believe Estonia already has this, so, I mean, why, why not Spain? Um, I haven't checked, uh, however, your, your national laws, but this is something to do, or this is something to lobby for, actually. Um, another um, group of uh, source of funding, it's actually international funds, and as we are here, hosted by Creative uh, Europe Media, so media do support the develop, uh, development of uh, the film projects, and uh, actually it can be any kind of project, linear, interactive, VR, as you want, uh, fiction or documentary uh, or short or animation. So this is also something to, to, to look into. 
Um, another group of um, sources of funding, it could be pre-sales distributors or exhibitors. So like, for example, like us, a sales company, a distributor company, we can do pre-sales uh, for you and kind of help you to finish your project. But not, uh, not only that, for example, IMX um, recently announced their development fund, uh, development fund that actually they allocate for the projects that will give them exclusivity. Uh, so IMAX would fund the projects that once they are finished will be exclusively distributed for short, certain kind of period of time in the IMAX screens. After that, you can sell to anywhere. Another source of funding to look into its brands, uh, of course, tech companies and uh, for tech companies, um, I want to mention, I haven't mentioned it here, it's like joint Nokia, NVIDIA or AMD. They have all uh, announced the, that they are funding uh, VR content. And the last one, an interesting one, is NGOs. So, um, talking about NGOs. So, there is this project called VR for Impact. And actually what it is, is a collaboration between United Nations and HTC Vive with a fund of $10 million dollars. Uh, to support documentaries in, uh, in VR. Why it is, uh, why suddenly United Nations got interested in, in virtual reality? Actually, one of the, um, the recent social campaigns in VR has produced seven times better results than their average traditional uh, campaign let's say linear or not, not linear, but uh, across the other mediums. So seven times more effective campaigns, of course they want to invest in VR. And to prove you this, this is a photo of uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, um, uh, UN Secretary in General and ex Executive uh, Director. If, I mean, this is a personal interest uh, that you can see, right? Okay, uh, this is something you cannot see, again, <laughs> but um, it's actually a, a very recent uh, chart of um, who are the biggest investors in, in the VR. And in the VR, in this sense, I mean, it could be across technology sector, content, gaming, or, I don't know, health education, whatever. What I wanted to show you, it's actually the fourth column, so it's really one of the highest still, it's Sky. It's a broadcaster, right? It's one of the biggest uh, investor in, in, in the VR. Not only that, um, ah, well, um, there is HTC towards the, the end, so it's a um, technology uh, company, and there are actually other private, private funds or um, uh, private companies that I'm not aware, but I was really surprised, and this is what I wanted to show you, that actually broadcasting company is one of the leader investors in the, in the VR. Okay, um, so here, if you can see this beautiful creature, his name is Henry, he won Emmy, and um, I actually met him twice. Um, I went to this uh, festival uh, last year in November in Paris, and uh, there were many installations of the VR and we were queuing in a queue to see something. My friend was telling, you have to see Henry, Henry is something amazing. Okay, so I queue in a queue. Um, it's long, it's a little bit boring. And next to the, the person that is trying, uh, Henry, I can see a little screen that shows what the person is seeing in his headset. And, uh, well, my friend left me, so I was, uh, well, I was alone in the queue. What do I do? I watched the little screen because this is the only thing that is moving. And um, so I saw the, the, the movie with Henry in the very little screen. And I thought, no, do I have to watch it in, uh, in, uh, in virtual reality? I mean, the project before I saw was this amazing uh, badass woman that she can snowboard like from the from the cliff. Okay, well, as, as, I, um, as my turn comes, I actually, I am in the Henry's living room and he is celebrating his birthday. And what do you think? I fell in love with him. And, um, and this is what it is and why I want to, to tell you that um, pretty much the same as with my first experience in VR, 
um, VR actually gives you empathy. It gives, it brings you so much closer to uh, to the main character. And if I was not impressed by by Henry when he was small creature in a small screen, I was really impressed when he was really next to me and he was waiting for his friends to come to his birthday. Anyway, this slide is, is not about uh, him, but I still wanted to tell you uh, the story. It's actually a little, another takeaway um, about uh, VR market in, in, in Europe. And uh, here I, I listed several things that you might be interested in. So there are several trainings in Europe uh, called if Lab, Cartoon 360, Creators Lab, these are trainings that can actually help you to develop your VR projects um, into something incredible. There are people, experts that can um, develop your stories, help you to edit, will tell you everything about uh, technical aspects to, to do it. I'm sure there is more, but um, actually these are the ones that I, I came across. And this is something for you to check. Uh, there is a lot of markets dedicated to, to VR projects and in many cases uh, the markets are at the project development stage. So if you have an idea, you prepared your pitch, you prepared your treatment, you have a, some visual um, imagination, how, how do you want your project to be, definitely go there. You'll meet great professionals, you meet um, your core producers, you meet funders that I haven't mentioned here, maybe you haven't heard before, but um, the, the market is growing and this is something to, to check definitely. So it's CPH Lab and Forum, Cross Video Days. Uh, by the way, speaking about Cross Video Days, remember? When, when I worked there, uh, there was free uh, VR projects actually in 2015 out of 60 projects selected. For its next edition in 2017, they are pre uh, expecting 30 so half of the projects to be purely VR. So other, let's see, digital formats of the content actually are pushed away by, by VR by, by major increase. Okay, uh, other things, um, other markets, Geneva Digital Market, ITFA Doc Lab, um, or it, ITFA Doc, um, Laval. This is actually a very interesting uh, market in the middle of nowhere in, in France, purely dedicated to virtual reality and from uh, this year on also to VR content. Uh, Marché du film with, with, with its developed uh, corner next. Uh, Sheffield Dog Fest, Venice Gap Financing with amazing person to, to follow, Michel Rieck uh, ahead and uh, VR this uh, Europe based in, in Belgium or World VR Forum. Some of these events have been established markets for, um, let's say, traditional formats, whether it's documentary or feature or whatever, but there are many events coming up on a large scale, purely dedicated to, um, to VR, and I think they are divided half-half. Another thing to, to look into, uh, festivals, uh, let's say the ones that actually do have a selection of VR, not a VR showcase where you can submit your film at it will be screened, whatever, because there is no um, yet enough content to do the selection process, yeah? So festivals that are serious in their programmation, some of them already have a competition and a, uh, awards already established for VR films, CPH Talks, Les Arcs, Nouveau Cinema, uh, Paris Virtual, uh, Sheffield Dog Fest, uh, Sundance, South by Southwest, Tribeca, and uh, To Zekron. Of course, it's not uh, an exhaustive list, but I think this is something, a uh, startup that you can, um, you can you, uh, look into. Okay, so um, we spoke about many things of um, the VR business, let's say. And um, I wanted to, before, before wrapping up, I wanted to speak a little bit about VR audience. And here, this is the company that uh, made, uh, made a research, what is actually um, the audience of the VR? And uh, you have most, most of the audience is qualified as Generation Z, then you have Millennials, Generation X, Baby Boomers, whatever. I'm not sure I fall into any of these, but uh, maybe I am. Um, to, 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 how do you see? To complement this, I actually wanted to show you this uh, picture. If you are a content geek like me, uh, you may um, 
recognized. This is William A. H. Macy from uh, TV series Macy, but he, well, for a TV series called Shameless, uh, but he have made beautiful and um, many other uh, leading roles um, in film, but he is not a baby boomer, most probably, right? So he is the generation you would think that maybe they are not yet interested in, in, in VR. Well, well, he is. And not only him, um, this uh, lovely gentleman here is uh, Sir David Attenborough, a um, British uh, documentary maker for, um, for TV. This person has been making documentaries, let's say, for BBC for all his life. Now he is interested and he is working on the VR project. So VR is not for young generation only, it's for everybody who is curious. And um, to actually sum up, not in a short way, but uh, with a lot of, uh, let's say, open-end questions, I prepared two slides of future promises. Um, so. Um, I wanted to, to start Future Promises with something that this amazing person called Michel Riek uh, from Submarine in the Netherlands uh, have, uh, have been telling in, in Berlin this year. It's actually, uh, he was saying that VR now is experiencing the same thing what cinema was experiencing at this uh, very beginning. Imagine the first Lumiere movies when the train came to, uh, to the screen. It was a wow effect. The cinema, in the very beginning, the cinema had to make an impression to shock people, I don't know, to, um, to burst them. But while, when it's settled right now, when it is an established uh, kind of market and established content, we know the rules of storytelling, we break them, but, but there is a lot of things that have been tried. Cinema is different now, right? So most probably this will happen to, to VR too. Um, what will happen in, in future and what needs to be, uh, to be happening is we need to discuss and to settle business models, distribution models, ethical rules, because actually for all the players that they are um, playing this game at, uh, at this point, we, come, we make up as we go. I mean, also, also with us as a sales company that uh, sell VR films, I told you, we sometimes offer MG, we sometimes offer percentage. We don't know if traditional film model can work on VR films, so we try. And then we'll see what will happen. The market, we think, moves so fast that most probably in a year we would have different arguments and different kind of experience to, to tell you. But this is something to, to look into. Another thing and big issue and discussion is um, about VR isolation and an addiction, but on a, on a contrary, other people actually predict that um, VR storytelling in the future might be designed to be shared and experienced together. While uh, so, then it will have its momentum. And um, actually, today we had um, a very short co uh, conversation during the coffee break that. I can see that it's, it is potential. Um, actually, people with the headset not necessarily do feel isolated. In the same market in the middle of nowhere uh, in Laval in France that I was telling you, I actually experienced two days uh, showing our films for, for non-professional audience. A non-professional audience in that sense, I mean local people from a so, small town in, in France. So very average people, definitely not not technology or content fans, uh, but uh, average audience. And what do you think? Um, so I, I have two boys that waited in a queue, so they asked to put the same film. So I put them two headsets, the same film, and they're around 10, and they are watching the film in their own headsets. There is sound and everything, so most probably they should feel that they are in their isolated uh, universe, but, but what they do, they actually comment to each other of what they are seeing, making jokes about what they are seeing to another and having a talk. They don't see each other in the virtual reality being that there is somebody else. There is their own experience, but they know that they're with, with somebody, with a friend next to them, and that they are seeing the same things. And actually, as kids, they were talking. Um, adults were, of course, not, not the same thing, but this was um, a very interesting uh, insight, let's say, that I wanted to share with you. 
Um, another thing with the Facebook example, it's also a question whether VR will be a next generation entertainment device or a social device, whether we will we'll be more towards the cinema or Skype or uh, will, will, will it will be both coexisting. And um, yeah, the, the last uh, slide of future promises is actually people are predicting that uh, VR with the technology being more advanced, uh, easier accessible, uh, and less expensive, ho hopefully the length is coming to a feature length and TV series is emerging in VR. Goggles will become accessible in price, VR and AR glasses much more simple. Actually, I don't know if anybody of you have seen, but Dior already produced their own uh, VR headset. It's not really beautiful, definitely not more simple, but um, considering that brands, they see it, um, let's say, a business niche uh, to, to move into. So most probably we'll have something more beautiful on the next uh, try of the idea than current um, Google Cardboard, let's say. Um, VR storytelling will be better. I mean, as I am positive and optimistic about VR, we have to admit that there is a lot of crap content uh, currently in the market and okay this is the try this is how we learn and this is how we move forward but um, the market cannot grow unless we have something really beautiful to show uh, another thing uh, what we see it's coming it's actually interactive and multi-facet uh, storytelling in VR so what Sergio was telling with uh, eye tracking I mean maybe like very soon in the future and there is the technology already there and uh, by companies Vertelio, Vonda VR, uh, Lucid Cinema, InstaVR, VR 360 that they actually uh, can give you the experience different different for me different for uh, for Olympia because I decide to follow this character or uh, somebody else decides to follow that character or somebody is interesting what's happening behind so I mean, um, if, you are, if you are aware of recent phenomena of transmedia or interactive storytelling, this is what will be adopted in VR and technology is already there and it gives you amazing opportunities to tell either different stories, to tell expanded stories, to tell shorter stories, many, uh, many things. Um, another thing, it's um, sign languages uh, or a sign interface will, will become a, will become a core operation model. So it's not by pressing the button, clicking the, the controller, but by eye tracking certain kind of signs and symbols that uh, will develop the system of, this would be the control that we'll, we'll use uh, for the VR, similar like what HoloLens is now uh, doing. Distribution market will definitely settle. We will we'll speak about editorialization because now many, um, many, uh, let's see, exhibitors, we speak again about the VR arcades like IMAX or M MK2 because they are closer to cinema, c cinema experience, that they actually take documentaries, they take blockbusters, they take um, our host type of projects, they take games. There is no actual editorialization because there is not a lot of content to choose from. And this is what will happen in future, definitely. And more distribution platforms and, uh, will be developed and segregated. And uh, hopefully, real democratization of production tools so they would be accessible, cheaper, and uh, yeah, um, hopefully make our life e easier and less scary. Um, and finally, just uh, the last slide to to support uh, to support the thing about um, intuitive um, kind of control of um, of a content in VR. Let's say, so currently we are using the point, the click, the type. Uh, we are on the verge towards the touch, swipe, or talk. But uh, the next the next step and the next ways we will we'll, we'll, how to say interact with content it will be gesture moves and eye gaze with the eye tracking that was mentioned before and very deep in future i don't know if you can see this this is a star wars um slide and in the center there is the hologram of princess leia so actually this is another positive and deep in uh, future note for you it's 
that VR is new, but actually there are another type of content formats coming. So mixed realities, holograms, they, they'll come like this. And uh, I think I would suggest everybody to, to dream or get ready about it and be passionate, hopefully. So may the force be with you and muchas gracias. <laughs>